hello and welcome back to today's tutorial video in this video i'm going to be showing you how to model complex logos using revit for example if you get a design from a particular brand and you want to make use of that brand's logo in your revit model this is just the best way to do it and i'm going to be showing you how to create these in two different steps we have the first one which is the text based logo and the second one which is the pictorial based logo and i'm going to be showing you how to create any of these logos using these easy steps on revit if this is your first time joining this channel welcome my name is grant and if you have been an old user welcome back in this channel we dish out interesting architecture related content so do well to hit the like button subscribe to our channel share this video and don't forget to turn on the bell icon so you get notified when next we publish a new video without further ado let's jump right into the video okay so first things first before we move into revit we need to download the two different logos we are going to be making use of in this tutorial video so we're going to head over to our chrome and download the logo so we're going to be making use of the apple logo and the vans logo so let's search for apple logo okay good so we select any of the apple logo we like okay and save us download it png image so let's uh let's save it to our desktop for for now let's save it as one let's save it to desktop then we look for vans logo okay and we download that as well so let's download uh, i think this let's make use of this this is okay so we'll save it okay desktop let's save it as two save all right okay we're going to go back to chrome and we're going to go to vectordad.com we're going to convert it to a vector image vectordad.com okay and we upload the two images that we have so that we can be able to convert them to vector images so now that we are in vectordad.com we need to upload our image and convert it to a clean outline so we click on photo to line drawing okay so once we click on photo to line drawing then we click on load image then we upload our image right we go to desktop one okay all right then we we'll click on download jpg file it automatically downloads it then we also do the same thing for the second one then click on the second image click ok to open vans then download jpg as well so we see that it has automatically downloaded the two jpg images then the next website we are going to go to is conversio.co so we're going to go to conversio conversio.co okay this is where we're going to convert these two images that we just downloaded to dxf files so that we can import them in revit so we're going to click on it then we'll choose files here we're going to go to downloads and we're going to select this first one click ok and we click on convert okay we need to impute what we want to convert it to so we're going to convert it to dxf so we're going to look for dsf where it is card now you can see dxf under the card section click on dxf then we click on convert so it has converted it then we just have to download immediately then we do the same thing for the second one we choose file we choose the second one we click open we select 
card DXF converts it converts it to DXF then we download it let's wait for the conversion all right now it has converted then we just click on download to download the DXF file so you can see we have downloaded both of them now we are done with this we are done with anything concerning the internet so we just have to close our chrome then we turn off our internet because we don't we, we don't have any use for it anymore then we so after this the next thing we need to do is to open our revit 24. so wait for our revit to load okay now that our revit is open what we need to do we want to model these two different logos as a family so that we can be able to use them in other projects if the case may be so we're going to open a family we're going to click on new family we're going to select generic face based model you can see this one here generic face based model we click on ok all right good so this is our family uh, layout so the next thing we need to do is to click on insert and we import the dxf file that we uh, we downloaded so we click on import we go to desktop downloads we click on downloads now you see we can't really find it here because the type of file is uh, dwg so we change it to dxf and we automatically see the two dxf files that we downloaded so i'm going to start with this one we click on it and we click on open it will automatically open it uh in this project no good now you can see this is where the thing is vans now you can see how big it is so we just need to scale it down a little bit now for us to do that we need to unpin it here then we click on scale and we scale it down a little bit let's say to this point good then we drag it and place it in the center here i think this is this is fine I think this is okay now as it is placed here the next thing we need to do is to click on create click on extrusion and we use our pick uh, line to select the face of uh like to trace out the logo of these vans so we move our mouse cursor to this point and we hit the tab to select multiple uh lines chain of lines together and we click on it and it automatically creates that then we do the same thing here we do the same thing here we select it automatically creates it for us okay now you can see the line is a little bit shaky so we just try to you know tab okay now we've drawn this one all right i think that is good this is all for here okay then we zoom in to this point tab to select this okay we zoom in here tab to select the chain okay then we have this one left we zoom in tab and we select it okay then we zoom in tab and we select it okay I think we also have here zoom in tab okay on join elements do the same thing for this one mm, why okay pick line ah i would have said because it wasn't working tab we select it do the same thing here tab and we select it again on join elements okay so now that we are done selecting okay it's remaining this we also use the pick line for this we move zoom in tab and we select do the same thing here tab select do the same thing here tab select do the same thing here
Okay, this is this is too small for it. Tab select. I think this is also too small. This wouldn't work. So we can just leave this two out of it. So now that we are done, we click on finish. But there are going to be a little challenge. Once we click on finish, a lot of lines will be intersecting her. Now we can see we have this here, we have this here, we have this here. So we are just going to make sure you make all the necessary adjustments. This only happens when you have complicated uh, logo designs that have a lot of lines working on them. This when you, this will happen. But if it's a very simple, straightforward design, you wouldn't have this problem. So we are going to fix this now, and I'll show you the result. So we click on continue. Okay, so we have one here, so we need to adjust this. Okay, so now that I'm done correcting it, now you can see this is our logo. So we can go to the 3D to see how it looks. Now you can see, so we need to adjust this, this size a little bit. Let's come to the front view and let's bring this down to, let's say, this point. Okay, now you can see how our logo looks. This looks really, 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 really good and we can import this into any project of our choice. So I'm just going to open a new project. Let's say new metric. Let's use this template. So we can use this uh, as example. So you, you see how uh, it works. Okay, so let's draw a wall. Since it's a face-based family model, so it works on uh, surfaces. So you can see, good, this is a surface. So once we, we are done with the model, we load it into project. Okay. Okay. We load it into project, come to the 3D, and we apply it on the face. Now you can see the logo successfully placed on our surface of the wall now if you have a dedicated uh, size or area where you want this logo to be applied so when you are making the model on the family template you have to make sure you make uh, you create the exact size you want before you can be able to apply it because if you are in 3d on the model on the projects you want to apply it you can't really adjust uh, the size of the uh, logo unless you go back to the template and adjust it from there but if you export this as a separate uh, model in a rendering software you can adjust the size however you want so this is just this is uh, all for the uh, text uh, or letter based logo now we're going to move on to do the next one which is for uh, the diagram or pictorial based logo which is the apple logo so we're going to be importing the apple logo here so we're going to click on insert import card click on this okay and you see we have our apple logo let's unpin it then we can be able to scale it down the way we want okay let's bring it down a little bit yes i think this should be fine it should be fine so since we're done with the vans you can save these vans separately as a different uh logo if you want and create a new logo for this but for the base of this tutorial i'm just going to be creating the both of them in the same uh template so this is our apple logo and we need to create the uh, extrusion we click on this we click on extrusion and we click on pick line to you know trace the path so once we're on pick line we'll come to this 
zoom in, click on tab and select the line. Okay. Do the same thing here. Zoom in, click on tab and select the line. Here. Click on tab, select the line. Okay. Now it's ended here. We do the same thing here. Select the line. Okay. Select the line. Select it. Select it. Okay. And uh, then the here. Select. All right. So after we're done tracing out the Apple logo, we click on finish. There are going to be some errors. And I can see we have one here. We have one here. So we're going to be adjusting all these errors to see the final product. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have one here. Okay, we have another one here. We have one more here. Okay, there's one more here. Oh, two. So we have uh, this. Okay, so we adjust it to make sure there are no loops. We have, I think, two more here, and that is it. So we also adjust this and adjust this. Then we click on finish, and we have our Apple logo. Now you can see how the Apple logo stands out. Then we can load this into the project again. But this time around, since I modeled the Apple logo with the same Vans logo, so it's going to uh, appear on the uh, project with the Vans logo as well. But if you want them to appear separately, you just have to model them separately. So you can see this is our Vans logo. This is our Apple logo. This is our Apple logo. So you see the Apple logo is too thick. So we need to make some adjustments to the thickness so you see this is the apple logo we we'll come to the front view and we reduce it a little bit to the same size as the vans logo load back into the project uh override the existing version and its parameters and there we have it we have our logo okay and there we have it we have our apple logo and our vans logo so this Apple logo, you definitely, someone will definitely know that, oh, this is an Apple logo and this is the real Vans logo. But if you had used the normal model text, uh, if you had used the model text, this model text and written these Vans, you wouldn't really know it is an actual Vans logo. You would just know that, okay, this is Vans, but it will not look like the exact logo because of the way the V is designed. So for you to get the logo exactly the way you want it for your brand, you need to use these steps and you'll get it exactly the way you want it if you found this video helpful or interesting please don't forget to hit the like button share this video subscribe to our channel and please turn on the bell icon so that you get notified when next we publish a new video see you guys in our next video bye